actually that's about it. So let's start with vertical velocity. If vertical velocity is greater than zero, basically if the ball is, um, actually let me first show you what would happen if we didn't have that. Let's say every time we hit the ball all we do is um, bump up the upward vertical velocity by subtracting from it uh, a certain hit force. And we'll let this hit force be Let's let it equal 20 for now and see how that works. Okay, so every time we hit the ball, it's going to be hit force, or be bumped upward by hit force. So we have this going on, but there's something kind of unrealistic about it, is that when it's moving down quickly and then you hit it, it just kind of decreases the downward speed, which a ball shouldn't do that. It should actually bounce upward even faster. Um, so, to create that effect, if the velocity is greater than zero, that is if it's moving downward, we want to, uh, kind of like when it hits the ground, negative bounce factor, but not quite as much as when it hits the ground, because let me show you what happens then. Because now we have this going on, where it's just bouncing too much. So let's divide that by 2. And now we have this, which is pretty reasonable. That's, that seems to simulate the ball bouncing pretty decently. OK. Now let's take care of the horizontal velocity. Huh, how do I do this? Um, first of all, if the vertical velocity is, oh, I know. If you look at this ball, um, if it's moving to the right and then you click on the left side, it should just add to it. However, if you if it's moving to the right and then you hit on the right side, then it should bounce this way in the opposite direction and vice versa. If it's moving to the left and you hit the left side, it should bounce. But if it's moving to the left and you hit the right side, it should continue uh, at a faster speed. So, uh, to test for if you're hitting on the side um, that is equal to the direction that the ball is moving, you want to multiply the velocity of the ball, horizontal velocity of the ball, with um, the hit x coordinate position uh, where you clicked on the ball and see if it is negative. Um, if, that, if you don't understand why that is, here, here's why. If you click on the right side of the ball, uh, hit x is going to be positive relative to the center. If you click on the left side of the ball, it's going to be negative. If the ball is moving to the right, uh, Vx, velocity x, is going to be positive. Moving to the left, it's going to be negative. So moving to the right, velocity is positive, and you click on the right side, then um, hit x is going to be positive. And when you mul multiply them together, it's positive. Same thing with when it's going to the left. Velocity is negative, your hit x is negative, and the result of the product, uh, the product is going to be positive. However, any time you have, uh, you're hitting the opposite side, for example, moving to the right, velocity is positive. You hit the left side, hit x is negative, product is negative. Velocity is negative, hit x is positive, then product is going to be negative. So basically, that if statement is detecting whenever um, you hit on the same side that it's moving towards. Um, positive, positive, huh, at least I thought so. 
moving to the right, hit on the right side. If it is, huh, well, we'll just try it for now. Vx times equals negative balance factor. Okay, let's go ahead and test that. Moving to the left, hit the left side. Okay, continues, hit the right side, continues, hit the right side. I'm oh, just kidding, I hit it the other way around. Okay, so if it's greater than zero. Alright, ball is moving to the left, I hit the left side, ball bounces to the right, and so forth. But we don't just want to reverse the direction, we also want to add to the velocity. So, after we reverse the direction, we want to, I guess, multiply it. Well, we don't really want to multiply it, we just want to add uh, the hit force. If Vx is greater than zero, if it's moving to the right, then we want to add the hit force, plus equals hit force. Otherwise, if it's moving to the left, or if it's stationary, I guess, we want to subtract the hit force. This might have been a cleaner way to do these few lines of code, but we'll leave it like that for now and see how it is. All right. Whoa, that's a bit much. Um, we'll divide it by two. Yeah, whatever. Oh, right. Actually, what we want to do is let it be corresponding to where you hit on the ball. So um, we'll have it equal to, uh, this is a good way to do it, vx minus equals 2 times hit x divided by ball dot width times hit hit force. All right, that takes care of it for us. Uh, basically what this code does, we'll see what it, if it works first. Yeah, that seems a lot better. Oh yeah, also you notice when I'm pointing at the cursor, it'd be helpful to, uh, pointing at the ball, it'd be helpful if the cursor would change. So let's turn the button mode to on.